Last year, I posed an urban legend to you. That urban legend was, does BBC Radio 4 control our nuclear submarines from Droitwich? The theory being, that if submarine crews can't hear Radio 4, they know that the UK has been hit by a nuclear strike, and they'll then launch a retaliatory strike. Of course, in that video, I explained all of the reasons why this wouldn't be true, or at least not the main thing a submarine crew would consider when deciding whether to launch a strike. It is, however, common knowledge that submarine crews did at one time listen for BBC Radio 4 as part of a wider set of complex and partially classified parameters when making the decision to launch. In this instalment, I have another Cold War urban legend for you. I heard it a few months ago, and only just got round to making a video posing the question. That question is, does the East Coast Mainline control our nuclear submarines? Let me tell you what I know, and we can discuss it from there. I received the following from a viewer, who I'm going to refer to as Dave to maintain his anonymity. Dave isn't his real name, his real name is actually Kevin. I'll read the story almost verbatim. In the early 1990s, I worked for a large corporation where I came across a story that might be an urban legend, but might not be. It was rumoured for many years that the UK's East Coast Rail Line was being used as a VLF antenna. During the Cold War era, the British Rail Network was utilised for a project known as Project Anthorn, or the Anthorn VLF Transmitter. The Anthorn VLF Transmitter was located near the village of Anthorn in Cumbria. It was said that it used both rails rather than just one. It's possible that one was a radiator and the other a director, or as a phased array to steer the signal east or west. The transmitter was reportedly capable of communicating with submerged submarines across the Atlantic and Western Europe, most of one hemisphere. The project was run by the GPO on behalf of the MOD, technically the Admiralty at that time. As far as I'm aware, the Anthorn VLF transmitter is no longer in use for its original purpose. One odd thing that struck me, which I never thought about at the time, is why would you put the transmitter on the west coast and the antenna on the east coast? Surely it would make more sense to co-locate them. I wondered if the separation could be some kind of matching stub, maybe that's pushing the bounds of probability. There was a lot of stuff back then that was kind of an open secret, at least amongst engineers at the corporation. It's hard to know how much was speculation. Ok, so let me quickly tell you about Anthorn and the East Coast Railway, for those who are unfamiliar. The East Coast Main Line is a 393 mile long electrified railway that opened in 1850 and now runs between London's King's Cross and Edinburgh Waverley. It runs double and quadruple tracks and was electrified in two stages between 1976 and 1991. Anthorn Radio Station is a British naval and government radio transmitting facility operated by Babcock near Anthorn in Cumbria. The VLF transmitter is primarily used for transmitting orders to submarines on 19.58 kHz with an output power of 550 kilowatts. Its call sign is Golf Quebec Delta. It's a NATO facility controlled from Northwood headquarters along with three other VLF transmitters in Norway, Germany and Italy. VLF transmissions are relatively unaffected by atmospheric nuclear explosions and within the range of 3 kHz to 30 kHz, they can penetrate the sea to a depth of around 10 to 30 meters. Now, I'm not an expert on submarine communications, railways or the science behind VLF antennas and I'm sure there's many people watching this who can tell us straight away why this would work or why it wouldn't. I'm guessing it wouldn't due to many factors, the main one being that the railway isn't raised above the ground and isolated, but rather really well earthed. It's on the ground, but there's quite a few points still to discuss. Firstly, it's not just Anthorn that sends messages to submarines, there's another VLF transmitter up at Skelton in Cumbria, just 20 miles away. And like Anthorn, it's used to transmit encrypted orders to submarines, which includes the Trident SLBM fleet. This is no secret of course, you can actually hear the encrypted data signal from Anthorn on 19.58 and 22.1 kHz. And the signal from Skelton, callsign Golf Victor Delta, also on 22.1 kHz.
Neither of these transmitting stations are anywhere near the East Coast Main Line, so it makes no sense that the supposed project would be called Project Anthorn or Anthorn VLF Transmitter. This means that if the railway was used as a VLF antenna, then there would have to have been a transmitter placed somewhere along its length, and I've never seen any evidence of one. Skelton actually took over from the now demolished Rugby radio station, and this along with Anthorn and Criggian, which is now also closed, means that at least three known VLF transmitters were communicating with submarines during the Cold War. So why use the East Coast Main Line? Was it a backup for if these three were taken out of action in a nuclear strike? Now, a ground-based VLF antenna the size of the East Coast Main Line isn't so far-fetched. Project Sanguine was a US Navy project proposed back in 1968 for communication with submerged submarines using extremely low frequency or ELF radio waves as opposed to VLF. The initial proposal required a giant antenna covering two-fifths of the state of Wisconsin, but was never implemented. It would have consisted of 6,000 miles of buried cables in a rectangular grid, covering 22,500 square miles, but this was rejected due to environmental implications. A smaller system known as Project ALF was implemented instead, using 84 miles of above-ground transmission lines, not lay on the ground like a railway. It consisted of two linked ELF transmitters located at Clam Lake, Wisconsin and Republic, Michigan. Construction started in 1982 and it became operational in 1989. The system transmitted at a frequency of 76 Hz. At ELF frequencies, the bandwidth of the transmission is very small, so they could only send short encrypted text messages at very low data rates. Transmissions between 30 and 300 Hz can penetrate to a depth of hundreds of meters. These signals were used to summon submarines to the surface to receive longer operational orders by ordinary radio or satellite. It covered around half of the world's surface. In 2004, the US Navy shut down both transmitters on the grounds that very low frequency communication systems had improved to the point that the ALF system was unnecessary. Now, Anthorn outputs 550 kilowatts on VLF, and while I can't find an output power for Skelton, it's likely to be the same or similar. At their full input power of 2.6 megawatts, both Project ELF transmitters working together only generated about 8 watts of ELF radiation. We can surmise that if the East Coast main line was used in the same way, it would have been similarly low powered. I did wonder about this from a safety perspective and an interference point of view too. There's plenty of RF sources close to the railway to either cause interference to a VLF antenna or pick up interference from one. Oh, and it's on the ground. And would the trains not interfere? What about breaks in the rails? What about the overhead electricity lines? There's just far too many questions around this one. So, is it an urban legend? Or could there have been some truth in it? Let me know what you think in the comments.